Hello. Um, I do have notes. I am sorry, but that's just the way it is. And also, uh, well, this is the first time I've ever told stories to people whose names I didn't know. Generally, it has been across a table or bar or in a vehicle and so forth. It always was stories were never so much a specimen as uh, just you know something that people said when they uh, were relaxing mm -hmm. at any rate i am going to cheat a bit i'm going to back up to uh the last storytelling session which I, I believe was called a fish out of water because i just couldn't resist telling you this one uh my father uh was during the depression he was a little kid and he shine shoes from the age of eight onward and he uh he heard it all he shine shoes and he would hear all the jokes all the debate all the uh stories you name it and it stayed remembered and then years later when he was a, a rural letter carrier see my older brothers were all pretty madonnas they didn't want to get up and go with him but it was a snowy day and others come to school he'd say Mac, come on and I'd hop in there, and I was like that big, and I would hear uh, all these stories, and they stayed remembered. And then years after that, uh, he was over at Tabitha, and he was uh, dying, and I rubbed his feet, and I was telling him some of these stories, and he, he said to me, uh, I think you're a hell of a nice guy. And then he closed his eyes, and that's about all I heard from him. But I think he appreciated that uh, these stories stayed remembered. I, I certainly enjoyed them. A lot of other people did too. Uh, this particular one I'm going to do at the beginning of my presentation is this. In my uh, hometown at that time, where my dad was, there was a, a character. <coughs> uh, characters generally have bad luck, and nothing else makes a person more likable. Then just have just bad luck. And then of course, and this man's name was Chet Spradley. And Chet's long-suffering wife, Harriet, of course, you know, she had to endure his shenanigans and so forth. But he was loved by everyone because, you know, what? I mean, let's sweep the fool and make their person you know, They're all pretty sad most of the time, but there was always Chet to make fun of. He was a, he was a good guy. He was very, I must say, he was very much well loved. Well, okay, Chet was at what was called a gandy dancer. He pounded spikes for a section game, the railroad, just outside of town. There was track there, and they'd maintain that track, and they would put in a new track and so forth. Well, one day, Chet and his fellows were out there, and unbeknownst to them over in Odo County, there's a bank robbery. And the bank robbers made off with their money in a big satchel. And they were driving in their car, and then at the Johnson County border, they were met by Sheriff Lippard, who wasn't gonna, you know, he, he gave chase. And there were gunshots exchanged. And, uh, the, uh, and Frank Lippard, the sheriff, he, he was injured. And, uh, and his car was stalled, so he, he went to a farmhouse and received help. <coughs> Meanwhile, there, the bank robbers kept going, and, and they were going like, uh, you know, driving along, and they had car troubles of their own. Apparently one of the sheriff's gunshots had hit their uh, engine. <coughs> So their car came to a halt, and there was a train track right there, and they jump on it. They jump on the train, and it was a freight train, and they were riding in it. And this train leads right to where, of course. Here's uh, where Chet and his fellows are pounding his bike, you know, it's a summer morning, and they're pounding away. But here comes the freight, and it's going past where Chet and his fellows are, and Chet had chosen that moment to go off into the weeds and answer nature's call. <laughs> there are high weeds. He went back in there. And then the thing is, the, the train's coming by, and the bank robbers have decided to pop from one car to another. 
and with their satchel of money, and all of a sudden the worst, you know, the, the satchel pops open, and there is a money store. One, ten, one, you know, it's 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 everywhere. And the times are hard, and these guys are hammering spikes on the side of the line, and they see all this, and they're they're you know they're they're scooping it up, they're putting it in their pockets, and, and it's great. Meanwhile, we're here to eat. <laughs> Hell yes, 
you know, I was just saying that I will go into the mortuary and I'll touch that dead man. <laughs> and then I would come back and my, you know, my, uh, my buddies there on the block, you know, they're all laughing too, I just said, <laughs> they would, yeah, we thought you are our leader. <laughs> so, uh, but this particular time, there was me on all by my lonesome, and so I'm going away from home in a big way. And I, the bus ride from Lincoln, I wrote, I wrote these notes later on in a notebook, and uh, uh, it was pretty underwhelming. And this was this was kind of neat, though. I I believe in. Signs and portents far more than any human being this high probably should. But I was riding on through Wyoming, and then for, first of all, there's a big herd of combine heifers and that particular one. They were all there, like moving along, and, and then all of a sudden, there's a statue of a guy sitting on a horse waving his hat. And that's pretty good, except his head's missing. <laughs> This does not bode well for our hero. <laughs> I'm moving on and I, I get through Utah and oh my God, Utah was bleak. And uh, the poor pot thing in the back of the bus was stuffed with diapers and it was awful. It's not the capital was stuffed. And still, you know, moved on and, and, I, and I wrote in my journal and stuff. I, you know, I, I, I was kind of inspired. I had read Herman Melville and Jack London, and now, my God, I was doing it. I'm, and I was moving into the frontier, the last frontier of America. I, and I was headed there, and I got on the, the ferry at Bellingham, Washington. We went on north into what's called the Inside Strait. And it's a lot of what's the word, an archipelago of islands and so forth along the armpit of Alaska, and you move up in there, and we stopped at Midcoff Island, where I got off. And in Midcoff Island, then, my adventure began. <laughs> 